Hey, good morning, y'all. Yes, sir, Jesus is Lord. Yes, sir, the word works. All you got to do is go to it, read it. You don't even have to make it work. It'll work itself because the word is alive and the power is in the word. The word's alive and powerful. It's sharper than two, any two-edged sword. It'll get rid of all the yuck and replace it with God's goodness. I've been talking to you the last several days on uh, the great substitution. Jesus became our sin, our unrighteousness. He went to hell for us. All the things that he did, he, was, he suffered, he was persecuted. <clears throat> he did all that and substituted that so that you and I don't have to. I want to deal with one little part of that today. He became sick that we might be the healed of God. So I want to read just a lot of verses today because some people have a little problem believing this. In fact, I'm going to tell you this uh, this way. If you can believe God to be born again and not go to hell and go to heaven, why, it's just as easy. The same faith will believe God to get your body well. <clears throat> Let me read this to you. Matthew 8, 17. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Isaiah prophesied this, himself, took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Now, if he bore it, I don't got to. Let me go back to that again like I told you the other day. Had I committed a horrendous crime and was going to be in jail for life and somebody else came in and said, I want to pay that price, I did that. <clears throat> and they stood in that place and they paid that price for me, then I no longer have to pay it. So Jesus himself bear our sicknesses and took our sicknesses so that we don't have to do that. Let me read this, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4. Watch now. Surely, and I love that word surely. That means it, it's sure. Surely he hath borne our, uh, he hath, he hath borne our griefs. That means weakness, weakness, sickness, and pain. And carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. See, God put it on him so that you don't got to don't don't have to have it. Now, First Peter two twenty four, you know this. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the uh, on the tree that we being dead to sin, should live under righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. A lot of other scriptures. But if you believe God to be born again, then it's easy to believe God for healing. Somebody says, well, I don't know, you know, will God heal me? He already has. He paid the price for it. It's kind of like, is there any way I'm going to come up with $500 today? Well, I've already put the money in the bank. I mean, I, I've deposited the check. Now all I've got to do is go make a withdrawal on that which was deposited. See, somebody gave me a check the other day. Nice check, too, by the way. Well, now all I've got to do is make the deposit, and once I make the deposit, I don't have to go to that person that made the check out to me and say, um, <clears throat> hey, uh, yeah, can I have, you know, $500? No. Uh, I gave you that and then some. All you've got to do is just go... De deposit it and then make a withdrawal. So get this. So people are always say, Lord Jesus, heal me. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is say, Father, I thank you that you paid the price and my sickness, whatever it was, maybe it's cancer or maybe it's just a headache or, or maybe it's just uh, influenza, you know, or, uh, the, you know, they call it the dog flu and the pig flu and the Asian flu. Uh, it's all the devil flu. That's what it is. But if it's on your body, you don't have to beg Jesus to heal you. He's already paid the price. And when he took it, he took it on the cross. So uh, sickness doesn't belong to you. Healing belongs to you. So this is kind of what I do. Anytime some kind of a symptom comes on me, I immediately say, no, 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 no. The Bible says this sickness shall not come the second time. And a lot of people quote that to say, well, that means, you know, if you've been healed of it one time, you can't have it the second time. No, what that is, is that sickness was on him, Jesus, the first time. He bore it on the tree, and so therefore it shall not come on me the second time because I am part of him. <laughs> I'm part of the body of Christ. He's the head, and I'm part of the body of Christ. It shall not come the second time. Jesus is not going to pay uh, the price for healing the second time, the third time, the fourth time. Uh, Jesus paid it one time, once and for all. And remember, he said there on the cross, it is finished. 
So healing for everything. I don't care what the doctors have said. I don't care what the report of, of, of the world is. You know, they say, well, you got this problem or you got that problem or, or, or whatever. No, 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 I've got healing because Jesus paid the total price for my healing for as long as I'm going to live this long life. And the Bible does promise us 120 years and to be in good health and mentally sound and all that other stuff. Jesus took all of that for us. So in this great exchange or in this great substitution, you've got to get a hold of the fact that healing is yours. Um, it's a little bit bold, but it's a right. I have a right to receive my healing because Jesus paid the price and I don't have to. Glory be to God. And with his stripes, you were. That means you was. That means you are. I don't know how to say it in the other way, but that means you is healed right now. Claim it. Receive it. Walk in it. Quit begging God for what he's already done. I got to go. So until I'm with you tomorrow, saints, remember, hey, Jesus is Lord. Healing belongs to you. And thank God the word works.